Wow, quite a crowd. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. It's so nice to see everyone here on such a wonderful day for Caltech. Welcome. I am Farnas Kadem. I'm Caltech's Chief Communications Officer. And it is really my pleasure to welcome all of you here to Caltech today for such a wonderful occasion. Um, joining us in the room today are, as you can see, a number of members of the Caltech community and the media. Uh, we would also like to welcome representatives from the offices of local and congressional elected officials. Mayor Terry Tornick from Pasadena is here with us. Thank you for joining us. I would like to extend a special welcome to a number of previous Nobel Prize winners of Caltech who are also in the room, and, and uh, we welcome them. And of course, to all of you who are joining us on webcast today. We are here to celebrate the 38th Nobel Laureate, Dr. Francis Arnold, for being one of three recipients of the 2018 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences awarded the Nobel to Dr. Arnold, quote, for the directed evolution of enzymes. Directed evolution, pioneered by Dr. Arnold in the early 1990s, is a bioengineering method for creating new and better enzymes in the laboratory using the principles of evolution. We have with us today Dr. David Terrell, Caltech's provost, Dr. Dr. Jackie Barton, chair of Caltech's division of chemistry and chemical engineering, and of course, our newest Nobel laureate, Dr. Francis Arnold. For members of the press, our speaker's full titles are available in this morning's media advisory and on our website. I would like to invite each of them to give some remarks and then I will open it up to a few questions at the end. So with that, Dr. Terrell. Thanks, Farnas, and thanks to all of you for coming. Uh, the first thing I'd like to say is that Tom Rosenbaum, our president, uh, would love to be here, would ordinarily be here, but just landed in Taipei and sends his best regards to all of you and congratulations to Francis. I was in the room just a few minutes ago when Francis took a call from Tom, and so they have been in touch directly. I'm delighted that all of you could join us to celebrate the award of this year's Nobel Prize in Chemistry to Francis for the directed evolution of enzymes. Francis shares the award with George Smith of the University of Missouri and Sir Gregory Winter of the MRC Laboratory for Molecular Biology, who were honored for the phage display of peptides and antibodies. This is a wonderful recognition of Francis's important work in protein chemistry and biocatalysis, and a great day for Francis, for Caltech, and for the intertwined fields of chemistry and chemical engineering, which share a special relationship on our campus. Francis created the field of directed evolution of enzymes, and in the process opened an entirely new approach to the creation of protein catalysts of improved activity and stability, of altered specificity, and of expanded reaction scope. She's taught enzymes to do things that no self-respecting natural enzyme would ever do. <laughs> and her ideas have been used, emulated, and elaborated by countless scientists and engineers around the world. When Francis began working in this field nearly 30 years ago, the dominant view was that improved understanding of enzyme structure and function would lead to rational design rules for the engineering of new catalytic activity. Francis took a different approach and began to adapt the principles of biological evolution for human purposes, implementing evolutionary algorithms in the laboratory to create new enzymes with unprecedented and useful properties. The useful part is important to Francis. She has an uncanny ability to distinguish between research directions that are interesting and those that are interesting and useful. She has consistently identified the latter class of problems, and as a result has changed both the way we think about things and the way we do things. 
Directed evolution has taken over the field of protein chemistry, and while we continue to make progress toward rational design rules, scientists and engineers who need new enzymes turn first to Francis's methods to solve their problems. Many of you will have noted that Francis is the Linus Pauling Professor of Chemical Engineering, Bioengineering, and Biochemistry at Caltech, Director of the Donna and Benjamin Rosen Bioengineering Center, and now Caltech's first female Nobel Laureate. Many years ago, Linus Pauling taught us the fundamental principles of chemical bonding and protein structure and laid the foundations for modern molecular biology. Francis is in many ways Pauling's worthy successor, a scientist and engineer who has opened our eyes to new possibilities in protein science, inspired generations of younger and older colleagues, and enabled a brighter future for science, engineering, and society. Jackie. Well, I am delighted to add my congratulations to Francis on behalf of chemistry and chemical engineering. And yes, uh, this is a unique and special place because we bring chemistry and chemical engineering together. Frances has changed the way we make protein catalysts. She has expanded almost infinitely the catalysts that we can make. So she's taught us a great deal about nature's chemistry, about how nature does its chemistry. And with each new protein her lab looks at and labs or using her technique across the, the world. With each new protein, she teaches us something more about nature's chemistry and how uh, nature achieves catalysis. So there is no question that Frances uh, richly deserves this award. She is only the fifth woman to receive the Nobel Prize in chemistry. And as Dave said, she is the first female Nobel laureate at Caltech. However, I am absolutely certain she will not be the last. So on behalf of chemistry and chemical engineering here at Caltech, uh, let me welcome and congratulate uh, Francis Arnold, the 2018 Nobel Laureate in Chemistry. It's wonderful to see so many of my friends. I've been here 30 years, and I've made wonderful friends, wonderful colleagues. As usual, my colleagues are far better prepared than I am. Um, I was awoken at a very early hour this morning in Dallas, Texas, and I've been on an airplane for much of the day. Uh, I, I have not prepared um, special remarks but what I would like to say is this is a very special place. Uh, I have had 30 wonderful years at a jewel of an institution right here in Pasadena, California. I never knew how lucky I was until I actually got here and was inspired by people who think big and solve big, hard, hairy problems. 
And the harder the problem and the more important the problem, the better it is. And that always pushed me to do my best and do things that other people couldn't do, not just do me too, but really choose to do the things that nobody knew how to do. In fact, I didn't even know that I didn't know how to do them. <laughs> and that fearlessness is just part of what Caltech is. We take young people in college years, freshmen in college, and teach them that they can do science when they're young. You should do science when you're young. It's a lot of fun when you're young. But they can do it, and they can dream great things. And it's been so wonderful to be here and be inspired by my older colleagues, but also by my young colleagues. So I want to thank my young colleagues, the members of my research group who are scattered around this room, because this is really about them. I didn't do any of these experiments. Maybe back in the 90s I did, but most of my experiments from the 90s are sitting in the front row here. <laughs> <laughs> They're the ones who do it, and we work as a team. The Nobel Prize goes to me, but it's really a team of brilliant people who love what they do that really are credited for what we achieve. So I thank you all for being here. I thank you for coming and celebrating this great thing. And I do want to say, Jackie's absolutely right, there are a lot of brilliant women in chemistry. They came a little later than some of the men, but they are Amazing. We are going to see a steady stream, I predict, of Nobel Prizes coming out of chemistry given to women. So I'd like to open it up for some questions here. Um, if folks have one, I'd like to start, actually, Francis, that was a perfect lead-in into the first question we have, which is from Ken Chang of the New York Times. And he says, you are only the fifth woman to receive a chemistry Nobel. Yesterday, Donna Strickland was only the third woman to receive a physics Nobel. There is obviously still a vast gender disparity in the physical sciences. On the other hand, this is the first year that women have been among the chemistry and physics laureates in the same year. What do you think your Nobel says about the status and recognition of women in the field? I, I am confident that the Nobel Committee will see the brilliance of the women who are coming through chemistry now. It's just such a rich resource. And as long as we encourage everyone, doesn't matter the color, gender, everyone who wants to do science, we encourage them to do it. We were go we're going to see Nobel Prizes coming from all these different groups. Women will be very successful. <laughs> yeah. right, let's try it now here, if it works. Are there other questions in the audience we can take? Hi, I'm Claudia. Yeah, okay. There you go. Hey, I'm Claudia with KNX Radio. So, I mean, do you see yourself as some sort of a role model now? Like, how do you handle that responsibility? If so, what can you do to, you know, help perhaps promote? Well, I haven't had science? a lot of time to think about it. I only have had the prize for a few hours now. <laughs> so I'm not sure uh, how I'm going to see myself tomorrow. We're all role models, right? We are teachers. That's our job here. And so we're all teaching the next generation by how we behave, by what we do. So in that sense, of course, I have to be a role model all the time. Um, whether you want to copy my path, I don't recommend it. <laughs> you have to find your own path, right? So what's the role model? It, it can be done. That's my job, is to show that it can be done. And, and people from very different backgrounds and different experiences can achieve pretty spectacular things. I've seen that many times here at Caltech. Other questions? Hi. Oh. 
Hi, Francis. This is Amanda at AP. Congrats. I just wanted to ask, you talked a little bit about this, but can you explain again how you got the phone call, what those words were, what your reaction was? Were you in bed? Like, Can you tell us okay. more about, about the circumstances? So I flew in to Dallas at midnight last night in order to give a seminar at UT Southwestern. And I crawled into bed at 1 o'clock. And then the phone rings at 4 o'clock. And I was sure it was my products from the 90s that were trying to get a hold of me over something, some disaster at home. But in fact, um, I saw that the telephone number didn't match any of my sons. So they, um, I answered the phone. and. I was pretty stunned. I was even more stunned than I am now. Um, and I had to collect my wits for a, at least 10 seconds <laughs> to accept the call. It was, uh, it, it was very exciting. The committee calls and tells you that you've been chosen for the Nobel Prize, at which point your draw, jaw drops to the floor and you can't say anything else. But uh, I, was, I was very excited. Then they gave me half an hour to take a shower and collect my thoughts. And then they called back. <laughs> they said, we can't talk to this woman <laughs> until she has a shower. <laughs> This is a little bit of a superficial question, but some viewers and readers are going to wonder, what are you going to do with the half million dollars? <laughs> is that how much you get? <laughs> I hadn't counted it. Um, I have, in recent years, been do donating awards to charity, and I plan to do that. And I will choose the right charity, and it may well be Caltech. <laughs> <laughs> work take you from here? I know you have talked about the incredible damage that's been done to our planet. Um, what, what else can we see from you in the near future? Well, I'll be back in the lab tomorrow working with these people to try to do what we're doing. We make, we make chemistry that's, that's compatible with life. We want to use life to do our chemistry for us and make things from renewable resources. We want to develop the science and the technology that will help us survive on our planet, thrive on our planet, and share it with all the other creatures that we share it with. Before we go on to other questions, I think we were hoping we can take some more, but I don't know if we we're going to try to do a toast afterwards. Is there, there is. There's, 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 so we're going to have to create some phase. Just for some of the champagne, we can take a couple more questions. Yes. So we're going to do some more questions. If you all would just. There's some room there. Um, hi, Dr. Arnold. This is Deepan from Caltech. Uh, you had a very interesting. You had a very interesting journey from mechanical engineering to aerospace to, to chemical engineering. Could you could you talk a little bit about your your path in science? Well, that's why I say I don't recommend anybody follow my path. It's a very windy one. I tried lots of things. I learned from each one of the things that I tried. I've been a mechanical engineer. I worked in solar energy in the 70s when Carter was president. We had a, believe it or not, some of you may be young enough to appreciate and not know that we had a national goal of 20% renewable energy by the year 2000. Wouldn't that have been wonderful to stay on that? I moved into biotechnology at the beginning of the genetic engineering revolution. And I've tried different things and put them together in, in odd ways. <laughs> and I really didn't figure out what I wanted to do with my life until I came here at age 29. So people often imagine ideas as revolutionary as yours as sort of striking in an instant, but in reality they can evolve over years. And I was just wondering if you could tell us a little bit about where your idea for looking to nature to do this chemistry came from and how it emerged for you. Well, no, no big ideas come in a vacuum. I think Einstein might be the only one who can lay claim to that. And they really are built on ideas from others. And my co-winners, for example, were doing combinatorial 
experiments that mimicked evolutionary processes with these phage display. That inspired me to work on more complex things, whole proteins and enzymes. And also the idea came out of desperation because nothing else worked. <laughs> so you had to try things and see what didn't work. And the old methods, the, 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 the current methods at the time were not leading me to something better than what nature made for solving a human problem. So in really trying to um, solve the real problem, we developed these combinatorial, these evolutionary methods that pretty much circumvent your near complete ignorance <laughs> of how sequence encodes function. Any last questions? Actually, if I can this to you. Is there anyone else who would like to ask a question? Yeah, I all right, then I am going to ask uh, our provost to make a, I think you have one, so Francis, to make a toast to please those of you who will have something to join us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, public that supports science. Cheers. 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 That seems like a perfectly good toast to me. I, I was going to say something more about Francis's <laughs> brilliant research and inspiring mentorship and all that, but let me just add uh, congratulations, cheers, and join me in toasting Francis. Congratulations. <laughs>